In this video, we are going to be covering the new latest feature that is going to be introduced in the upcoming Angular 17.1 release, Signal Inputs. We are going to learn how these inputs uh, take forward the Angular reactivity story. We are going to see how they compare with the traditional at input decorator. We are going to cover all the available options and we are going to learn how Signal Inputs provides us with a better alternative than the on-changes lifecycle hook. So without further ado, let's get started learning Angular Signal Inputs. Welcome back to the Angular University channel, I'm Vasco. In this lesson we are going to learn Angular Signal Inputs. We are going to take here a simple component, a counter component, that is currently based on the traditional at input decorator, and we are going to be converting it into a component that is using signal inputs. We are going to be comparing the two then to see which version you prefer. Notice that we are using here ng on changes. More on that in a moment, we are going to be providing you with a new alternative to the on changes lifecycle hook. Let's then see here our component. Let's just do a quick demo. It's a simple component that prints out here to the console the new values of a counter. So we have a counter component, a button on click. When we click on increment, we are incrementing a counter. And this counter here is passed as an input to the counter component. Let's have a look at the counter component, which is written with a traditional input decorator. We can see that in order to detect that a new value is available for the input property, we're using here the usual onChanges lifecycle hook that takes in here an ng onChanges method and receives here a changes object. We need to detect if there was a change in a given property with this name here value. And if that is the case, we can retrieve here the current value of the property and also the previous value. So this is the usual way that we would do this with the input decorator and with the onChanges lifecycle hook. Now we are going to re-implement this same example, but this time around using input signals. So it's very simple. It works in the following way. We are going to remove the use of the input decorator and we are going to turn this into an input signal by using here the input angular core primitive and we're going to pass it here an initial value and with this simple change this value input property is now a signal input if we try to use it as it is this won't work because we can see that we are getting here something weird like a function printed out here in place of the value. So the value here is not the primitive numeric type. Instead, this is a signal that emits numeric values. So as usual with any signal, we need to invoke it in order to be able to grab its value. So now everything is working correctly as expected and we didn't have to change anything in the parent component. Now we are going to see here this error from WebStorm. This is because WebStorm doesn't support yet uh, input signals that is going to come in future releases. Remember, this feature at the time that this video is being recorded has not been released yet. All right. And I plan to cover other uh, upcoming features as soon as they are on release candidate in the future in this channel. So if you want to uh, keep yourself up to date to all the upcoming changes in Angular, make sure that you hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications so that you don't miss anything. And if you could leave me a like here on the channel, it always helps us out. Now, going back here to our counter component we are passing here a value and the value here is the counter. So we are passing here as an input a numeric value. So the syntax for an input is the same and you can safely ignore this error. All right. Now, here in the parent component, when we are calling a signal input, everything still happens in the same way as before. It's here that things are different. Now we no longer have a numeric primitive value. Instead, we have an input value, which is an input. So when new values here of 
the input property are uh, assigned here to the counter whenever this counter property changes its value then this signal here the value signal is going to emit a new value so if you check here the type with control shift p you can see that this is an input signal of number that's the exact type of this member variable but now the question is what about the features that we had here of detecting new values of the signal here in the console? Well, we can still do that, but this time around, we can use the usual properties and primitives of signals to do that. We no longer need the on changes uh, lifecycle method in order to do that. So in this case, to detect changes here to this signal, we would do that like we would for any other signal in our application by using the effect API. So let me go ahead and let me define here an effect. And I have a video here on the channel uh, covering uh, uh, signal effects. You can go and check it out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add here a logging statement. I'm not going to type this out. I'm just going to paste it in. So this is the new counter value. And remember, we need to call here the effect. We need to access it using this syntax. Don't forget to put these parameters here. This is going to tell this effect that this effect has a dependency on this signal here and that whenever this signal changes, the effect should also be rerun. Remember the effect function here, this function that I have highlighted is going to be executed at least once. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's see this in action. I'm going to clear here the console. And if I click here on increment, you can see that everything is working correctly again, as expected. So as you can see, this is significantly easier to read. I think I like this syntax a lot more. And now it's much easier to make our components signal based signal inputs it's the second step in the angular journey to full reactivity so before we had the signals api now we have input signals probably the next step still to be confirmed of course will be local signal based change detection and eventually full scale application wide signal reactivity but that is for the future right now this is what we have we actually this is what we are going to have available in angular 17.1 at the time of recording of this video this is not out yet but the api should not differ a lot once it's released now let's go ahead and let's further explore here uh, these uh, features that we have available for the signal input so right now this uh, input property is optional but if you want to make it required you can do so by calling input not required and you don't need to pass an initial value because the initial value should be passed here via the template and if you try to run this without any input value you're going to get an error the error that you get might be slightly different than what you see here on the screen but the concept is the same so now this input is required now if you want to use the other options of input will require you have them here you have the alias option and you have the transform option i'm going to demonstrate these two options quickly here using a non-required input but the concept is the same so here we have the initial value and the second argument which contains any of these options so the alias gives a different name here for the input uh, property name so here we are using the value name for the property which is the same name as the variable but if we would want to give this a separate name such as for example counter we can do so in the following way by defining here an alias called counter so if i clear this and i try again you can see that the alias is working and just like in the case of uh, input, uh, the, just like in the case of the input decorator, you can pass in here a function, right? So this is going to be a value of type number. And let's say that we want to transform this and multiply it by 100. As you can see, 
this is already working. If I click here on increment, the transformation is getting applied. So with this, we have covered all the features available in Angular input signals. As you can see, it works exactly like the input decorator, but it's all signal based. The input of your component, like here, this counter property is going to be transformed automatically into a signal. And with this, you have access in your component to all the usual signal primitives. Here, I gave you an example of an effect, but you could also have a computed derived signal based on this signal. Everything available in the Signals API is also available to help us build this component. If you want to learn more about signals, check out the official documentation and also check out here the blog post that I wrote on signals, Angular Signals Complete Guide. You have here uh, an exhaustive exploration of the API of signals, examples, and you have here answered, I believe, all the most common questions regarding to more advanced use cases, such as, for example, signal cleanup, the use of signals with on push, etc. So go check it out. And if you prefer to learn on video format, then go ahead and check here the Angular University. You're going to find the signal section here on the Angular Core Deep Dive course. So if you scroll down to it, at the bottom, you're going to find here uh, one hour, one hour 15 around that section on Angular signals. It starts here and it covers everything from writing your first signal to the computed and the effect API cleanup and it talks here about a common pattern, which is the Angular signal-based data service that might come in handy to you if you are building an application with signals. So with this, we have ended this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave me a like and make sure not to miss any of the upcoming videos here on the channel. I'm going to be diving into a lot of uh, Angular topics. Leave me in the comments suggestions for future videos. Thank you and cheers everyone. See you next time.